friends welcome to connected hoping you had a great week and you're ready to enjoy your weekend my name is Fabiana Espinosa and I'm going to be guiding you on this journey I am talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz Bolivia in South America I come today with a new guest and a new topic for the people that are in Bolivia you can see us through the Abiyala channel but to the people that are not here, remember that you can see us on Facebook, Twitter, and if you miss our transmission, you can check us on our YouTube channel. is gonna take us to the world of weaving we are going to meet Margarita Lekova she lives in the US and she's gonna tell us all about the art of weaving before we connect with Margarita we are going to find out about her background let's meet her Born and raised in Bulgaria, Margarita earned her degree in economics from the University of World and National Economy in Sofia, Bulgaria. After spending a couple of years in a beautiful small town in Rodopi Mountains and enjoying what the beautiful outdoors have to offer. In 2010, she decided to follow her curiosity and love for travels and meeting people from all walks of life. She first moved to Miami, Florida and began her career in hospitality and accounting with Starwood. Two years later, she joined the founder of Piola as a treasury manager and oversaw new store openings in North and South America as well as Europe. During that time, she discovered her appreciation and love for arts. Four years later, a strong pull towards nature made her move to Hawaii, and after a year spent on the beautiful island of Oahu, she finally moved to New York, the cosmopolitan city that has so much to offer. In June 2017, Margarita took a weaving class in Manhattan and immediately realized her passion for all things woven. It was not too long, and while working full-time as an accountant, the idea of Woven DNA was born. It is my pleasure today to introduce Margarita Lekova. She is going to talk to us all the way from New York in the U.S. Margarita, to me, it's a great pleasure. I cannot wait to hear and to learn from everything you're going to tell us. I am really curious about this topic. So let's go with the first question. How did you get in touch with the art of weaving? Any influences you have had? Mm. Hi, Fabiana. <laughs> Very nice to connect with you uh, this time on the art of weaving, which is a pretty primitive art. Uh, how do I connect it? I always had an appreciation for handmade things, uh, handcrafted, um, and um, I just wanted to take a class. Like every time I see a, a loom, it, I've, I've seen the big ones and they are pretty intimidating. They seem very complex. So I was interested, even my grandmother used to have a loom. Um, I never had a chance to learn from her. But uh, while I was here in New York City, I just attended a class. Uh, it was uh, Ori weaving, uh, which is a Japanese style of weaving. And um, the loom is pretty, um, pretty good size. Like you can have it in your house if you want. It's not very uh, hard to transport. So I took the class and I instantly felt this um, love, like this connection. I was like, Wow, I can do so many things with the woven, the hand woven cloth. It's just amazing. And I always wanted to, people always asked me if I was an artist and I <laughs> obviously until this moment I was not. Um, but I always knew that if I have, if I just have the tools, if I just have the instrument, I can probably be an artist as well. It's just a matter of finding your, 
the materials you work with. So I took that, this class and I instantly wanted to make a dress. <laughs> right. So I mean, it was pretty funny. And uh, tell us about your experience. Like when you decided you fell in love, right? So how mm -hmm. did everything happen after that? How was your the process of experiencing it and learning it and improving your weaving skills? Well, after I took the, my very first class, which was just a two-hour class, I I was convinced right away that I want to continue doing it. So uh, the place that I took the class offered like an some so-called advanced class where you could take maybe the length of um, 40 regular hours. I'm not 100% sure or 20. So I signed up for that class and you could have your own project to work on. So you can go and work for a certain amount of time. So um, I started going to the studio and every time when my time was up, I just wanted to continue weaving. <laughs> So I was like, I want to stay a little longer, so maybe I should and want to come home and be able to sit on the loom and just create something. And Because when I sit on the loom and I use my hands and I start picking the texture and the colors, it's just you, my mind goes away from everything else and it's just like, um, it's a very nice experience for me. So that's how I came up with the idea that I will eventually have to purchase the loom and be a, have the flexibility to do it as at whatever time of the day I want after work since I was working full time. <laughs> right. So uh, actually you at the beginning you had it only at the studio where you took the classes you had it and then now then you decided to have it one at home for yourself to use it at your own time. Yes. <laughs> well, I believe that's when things got more serious for you, right? Like you were more independent to, to like kind of do your own creations. Yeah, so I purchased the loom and of course I wasn't fully uh, sure how, how it works, how I can put it together. <laughs> but I followed the instructions. It was not that complicated. I'm happy I put it together. Now the second step was like, Part of the weaving, one part is of course the loom and the other part is the yarn you use. So you do need to have materials. You, um, back in the days, uh, it was very environmental friendly because all the materials would come from animals or plants. And nowadays we have also synthetic yarn. So I started researching uh, places where they carry different types of yarn and I was figuring out which yarn I liked the most. So of course the first place, place was internet where it was, you could see the color but you couldn't really, it feels when you touch it. So I found few places here in New York and I went, I actually traveled quite far to get to those stores because wow. they're out of the city. Um, and yeah, when I went to the yarn store, it was another falling in love with all the different yarns that were there. Uh, for me personally, I do love sparkle and metallic and glitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I ended up buying a lot of those. And then of course, it's a process to learn to combine the yarn, to come up with a good stretch fabric or not too heavy for its clothing. Um, I just wanted to say a few words how uh, weaving started, if that's okay. Of course, with you. please go ahead. So I was interested to look up the origins, the ancient origins of weaving, and um, I just found out that it started um, with the nomadic lifestyle when people had to make tents for themselves, saddles, uh, bags, or even like had uh, bands or anything that they can basically used during the day clothing, but also for surviving. And uh, still, mm -hmm. they had this nomadic life of style. They could not use the loom as we know it today, like the big heavy loom. So they had this thin, I would describe it more like a back stripe as we know it today loom. And they would just weave a small piece, um, the length would not be the length would be big, but not the width. So it would be narrow, and they would end up stitching those together. So it was very time-consuming. 
However, everyone had an appreciation for the women who could weave a tent or a, um, a tent divider or a saddle. So they would celebrate those skills. And although mainly women did weave, also men were involved in this as well. And Margarit, how long does it take you? Let's say you start a project. Okay, I'm gonna make a bag. Uh, for a bag, it could be pretty pretty quick. I would say that you can finish it in one evening. Right. Uh, the main mm -hmm. thing is to dress the loom, which is to... Uh, so basically weaving goes vertical and horizontal and the vertical part is called uh, warp and the vertical part is, go, uh, is called weft. So the vertical part, you have to dress the loom, you have to put all those yarn strings on the loom and then when you start weaving, you go back and forth from right to left and you throw the shuttle in between the uh, warp and that's how you uh, weave with the weft part. Um, yeah, for a piece of, uh, for a small size, like a one meter long, it would definitely can be done in one evening. My challenge after that was sewing also, because after you have this piece of cloth, you have to design what it will come out and you, you have to actually put it together. <laughs> so it's so another step to learn <laughs> right. something new. And I was always fascinated because when you see this type of work, like you were saying, you do it on horizontal, right, on the both sides. And the way you combine the colors and you make it happen, like, you know, it, it just, you create a pattern. And that's where my next question is going. How, what is the relation between weaving and meditation? Because you spend like a long time, because you say one evening, but it's a long time to be concentrated on one thing and make it like creating a pattern and keeping your mind away from everything else. So I'm sure there is a relationship, relation there. What happens? Yeah, I think in my opinion, it's really the rhythm because when you weave, there is also a rhythm once you start using the shuttle from right to left and you use your um, feet to change the pedal so you can alter the warp. Um, it's really the slow pace. It is, it, it is a little time consuming, as you said. Like I say one evening, but I do mean until 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. since I'm so committed. <laughs> I just don't even feel the, how the time passes. Uh, so yeah, I would say that it just allows you to be in a quiet environment if you choose to do so. You, you can of course play music in the background. Most of the time I do weave and there is no music or anything around me and then it's just the, it's a creative um, space, it's a creative process. I would imagine a lot of artists can relate to this uh, experience, but when you sit on the loom, there is definitely a pace, there is definitely a rhythm of weaving and it's, it may be a little bit repetitive, but it does allow you to step outside your thoughts and just, you don't know, experience like this mellow and peace and quietness. <laughs> right, that sometimes like with our schedules and work and families and busy life that we have, sometimes that's just what we need. Right, and that's I think I, I think it fascinates me because you can see it when you see it on stores on people that have their work handmade work. You can have you can see that there you you see the effort you see the time that was put on the pieces. It's just so beautiful. So from there, let's move on to woven DNA. How did it start? I always loved the uh, word weaving. It it had. A me some meaning for me every time I hear about weavers or weaving I, I just could relate like something triggered in me so um, I was thinking of a name around weaving um, however woven it's a little shorter and then woven DNA the combination is it's just um, to me the meaning is that we carry this in ourselves and once we uh, once i got in touch with weaving i could totally um connect to those memories of 
my grandmother or my ancestors who have done this, I just totally could relate to this and could describe it as something that it's, it's very mine, it's very, it belongs to me. Right. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of make the significance that we carry within ourselves. And just the process of weaving and creating something out of almost nothing, it's just amazing to me. It's very beautiful. <laughs> Why didn't you do it before? So what happened in your life that you said, okay, now is the moment? Well, as I said, I, uh, I used to live in Hawaii for a few months and my uh, landlord lady, she used to have a loom in the house and it was this humongous uh, wooden, very heavy structure and I couldn't imagine how long it would take to dress the loom, like to put all the wire. And to me, it just looked so very complicated and so time consuming that maybe as most people today would think I was like, who would even have the time to do this at home? I mean, the rooms have the time and they have become much more efficient, but still it does take a lot of time to weave a piece especially if it's a carpet. I, I wasn't even aware at the time that I could create a luxury piece of clothing. I mainly thought that weaving is for carpets and right. uh, home, yeah. home decoration and things like that. So I, this wasn't very appealing to me. And then when I took this class at, in New York, I just like, I was looking for something to do a new experience, something creative that I can probably like and I remembered of my grandmother doing it. So I decided to give it a chance. Um, then just the, um, practical for our fast life, like this type of loom. Um, I'm so appreciative of this a Japanese lady coming up with this particular style where uh, I think she even says you can become an, an artist or a weaver at any age of your life. You don't have to start at certain age, like anyone can weave. I was even looking at videos of blind people weaving and the yeah. cloth that was coming out uh, was beautiful. So they do, I could com pretty confidently say that weaving is a healing art. It's a primitive art, but it's also a healing wow. art. It's like I would imagine like most form of arts right. healing is also like weaving is healing art. I can't wait to actually have you explaining and showing us all of your pieces. So right now we're gonna go to a fast cut. Margarita please wait for me and people at home will be right back with the last question for her. Stay connected. connected we continue with Margarita who is in New York and she's telling us all about the art of weaving Margarita we reached the last question of this interview and I really want you to tell us which one is is your favorite piece from all of the ones you make and why and also which one is the most sold piece so far mm. Oh, thank you for that question. I'm sorry, it's the last one. <laughs> um, well, as I mentioned, I really fell in love with the idea of uh, making clothing out of weaving clothes. And to me, my very favorite, favorite pieces, all of them, but it would be the same type, would be the kaftan dress, which is just a long, uh, oversized, extra roomy uh, dress which uh, um and also i could i would also say like the kimono style or um like a long uh, sleeveless uh jacket type of or a vest type of thing it's really interesting because when i wear those pieces in the let's say i'm on the street or in the store and someone compliments uh, me they don't <laughs> they're also confused how to call them they're like oh, i'm not sure if this is a kimono yeah i think it's a kimono <laughs> so I, the idea uh i would say that this could be a statement uh, piece of clothing for every wardrobe like it could be female or male and it's really it really shows that the person who wears it has an appreciation for handcraft, um, 
just crafts and art and uh, I would say also I've recently started using like more natural materials um, just like ornaments and um, textiles it's to me yeah my, my favorite would be like the oversized and extra roomy something that allows you to it's almost like you're covered but and you're protected but you're also very comfortable and you can wear it pretty much with everything right it looks it's, so comfortable and it does speak about uh, you about your personality right and so far which one is the most popular um i have sold few dresses and i have sold few uh, crop tops which uh would not be technically the kimono i'm talking about but i would just continue making those and <laughs> and i'm sure that i will find i as i as we spoke i started just a year ago and i've been doing it almost on the side while working full time so right. it has not been like like my main focus and it does take a little a little bit of time to find your customers and to find the as you said the piece that you want to be kind of your piece <laughs> right to make it your own so people associate or when people need something like this they can come and look for this Right. So, and then do you do any type of like bags or uh, rugs? You were saying that, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I believe that all the possibilities are endless. Um, there are many, many possibilities. I've seen people making pillowcases. They, of course, rugs. You can make curtains. And um, we do have an idea with a local artist from Brooklyn to start doing upcycle bags. Uh, basically, she's a very successful uh, designer herself in eco fashion, where she uses um, uh, environmental sustainable prints and she prints on clothing and she design, designs clothing. And um, she has a lot of scraps from her uh, production. So we uh, have an idea of started, starting using those scraps we will weave them in cold and we will teach actually people how can, they can make uh, bags and upcycle. Like there are so many people I'm sure who can relate to this that they have pieces of clothing that they don't no longer use, that they're not interested in wearing. So instead of donating, they can probably try and create something out of them and give it another chance. <laughs> right, and another thing that I believe it brings, like this, the fact that you're actually practicing this, is that not only you are creating your own pieces, but you're kind of like getting in the community. For instance, these are other, these other artists that you say, and you can co-create and get, and get your art to another level. It's, that is something that I really appreciate, and I love to see it happening when I have my guests like you that come and tell me the stories, because that's how it is. Once you start, another whole world starts to develop. Yeah, that's true. I, I totally believe in collaboration with other artists and I'm super excited about this project. Actually, I can't wait to start. That is great, Margarita. I am so thankful that you had the time to share this with us and to um, not, not only show your work, but actually tell us a little more about what's behind weaving and where it comes from. I will give you a little space so you can say hello to the audience and also invite them to your uh, share your Instagram uh, information with them. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I I really really hope that whoever listens uh, in Bolivia or anywhere in the world um, can have a little more clear idea of what weaving is. And if there is anything out there you want to try, and you always find a reason not to just give it a chance and go for it. <laughs> That's great. Where can people find your work and see you? Oh, yes, my Instagram account is my main um, place where I post like up to date uh, my work. So it would be Woven DNA, which is W-O-V as Victor E-N-N-D-N-A. 
All right, I will have your information displayed on the screen. And Margarita, thank you again. I'll give you, I send you a big hug. Mwah. Always be well. And I'm, of course, I'm going to be following you and seeing more of your creations. The best luck for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy we could connect because of weaving. <laughs> After speaking with Margarita, what I like to rescue about all of her experience is the fact that there is no time to dedicate yourself to do what you really love. For as much work and, you know, busy life and busy schedule we have, doesn't matter if it takes a long time, if it takes years or if it only takes a few months, but as long as you make a project or if you see you see a chance and you see there are some classes here or you meet somebody that is doing what you like get in touch get closer and you start doing it for as little as much time you can give to it another world will develop when you start and you engage on a new activity i will see you again in seven days do not hesitate to write me if you know somebody that is doing something beautiful or is doing something that could help another in order to have a better life or in order to have a new habit. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I will be glad to connect with you. I will see you next week. Until then, goodbye.